Andrew, welcome to the program. Well, the news, of course, big news really, in a sense, or is it, uh, that the fact that Federated Farmers haven't signed the Hewaka Ekanoa agreement that the other sectors all sort of came in and did. What was the reasoning behind your lack of signature? Basically, we just wanted to make sure there was no uh, sort of confusion as to where we stood, and um, that's why we only put forward our own submission where we were very much focused on the need for a review of the targets before we agreed or would agree with any pricing mechanism. Um, and, you know, because I guess the government in their response to the May proposal, they came back w with a proposal that was solely fixated on achieving the targets. For us, that meant we had to shift our focus to those targets and, you know, the group um, probably weren't willing to go as far as we were and say, you know, if there's not a um, review of those targets, then it's no deal from us. Uh, and so that's where we're at. And I guess, you know, the I don't know, um, some of your listeners may have heard on ZB last week where the various cabinet ministers were busy trying to claim Federated Farmers said this in their submission on Three Waters. Um, you know, it's very easy for politicians to try and uh, spin things how they want. So we just wanted to leave absolutely no shadow of doubt as to where we stood. And I guess, yeah, that whole debacle last week with them claiming we took a different position in our submission than what we actually did shows to me that um, us having, if we put our logo on another submission, then we they, they would claim, oh, you're, you're happy with everything because your logo's here and they wouldn't acknowledge our, our own submission. So that was why it was really important. So does this sort of signify a bit of a break in the ranks, or is it just this one point that you're sticking out on? It's fair to say there was a lot of the membership, particularly our sheep and beef farmers, who were pretty up, getting fairly upset even before the um, government came out with its proposal around what the original May proposal was going to do. So... Um, and yeah, a lot of concerns raised around how the impact on sheep and beef sector. And so I, I dare say, yeah, there is some differences there more than just over the targets. I mean, obviously the, the targets are the key thing. And I mean, if the targets were changed, then that would then have a flow on effect of possibly meaning that the, you know, the May proposal um, wouldn't impact so badly. Um, but you know, I think that the target definitely to be to be changed, and yeah, there'd still be some member concern with how it's all set up. And I guess essentially you're a, a ground up. I don't know you refer to it as a ground up organisation. So what your members say is probably what you know you've got to follow through on that. Yeah, very much so. I mean, um, that's how we exist is through people choosing to belong to us to represent their viewpoint. And, you know, we've got to listen to our membership. Otherwise, why do we exist? Um, you know, we're there to tell people what our members think. And so that, that's the important thing that we've got to do. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not for us to go back and tell our members what they should think. Um, you know, it's them telling us what they think. Obviously, there'll be times where we can um, sort of, feed them back information in terms of, hey, we've got to shift this or that. But when, when it's clear cut, cut that they are opposed to something and, you know, if most of us in the organisation aren't feeling too comfortable with it either, then we're on a fairly solid ground to say no. Well, of course, this week's an unusual week, isn't it, with field days uh, kicking off in a couple of days' time, a summer field days for a change, although when you look at the weekend weather, you'd wonder. But nonetheless, uh, how are you feeling? You'll be there, and what, what are you looking forward to? Uh, Roy smiled to myself on the weekend, thinking about, yeah, I'll have to pack my rain jacket after all, um, thinking that it could just be shorts and jandals and T-shirts, but no. no it's uh, going to be standard field days weather by the looks of it, even though it's going to be in the end of November. Um, yeah, I just, I guess, good opportunity to catch up with um, members and just chew the fat with ordinary farmers. Uh, we'll have our stand in the pavilion. I'm pretty sure it's in the same spot it was last year. So for those that saw it last year and want to have a yarn, do drop by. I'll be there on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and yeah, we'll have board members rotating in throughout the stand um, the entire time. So 
yeah, for us, it's just a great opportunity and to connect with members and hear their concerns. Uh, it was really great last year seeing all the people. And, um, yeah, I had planned to actually see other things at the field days while I was there, but all I did was stand on the site the entire time and um, talk to people. But I, I do need to buy, look at um, new vacuum systems for the cow shed. So I... 